Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to be working on some menus as well as some transitions and a little button that will toggle between full screen and not full screen as well as some just pausing functionality and a little bit of quality of life features. So grab some coffee and let's get started. Now, first off with the scene, you'll see a couple differences. The main one being that we now have a level camera, and if we hit preview on it, you can see it's in the top corner of the entrance. And this I just found was a good spot for the default camera for the main menu. Now we're gonna be hiding the player body as well as pausing time right out the gate, and then we'll just unhide it when we need to in order to actually start playing the game. And then we'll transition from this camera to the other camera. Now we're gonna be using a couple features for that within Godot, but we'll get to that in a minute. Besides that, we also have a menu system here. So if we go ahead and open that in the editor, we can see a couple menus here for the launch menu, the pause menu, as well as the restart menu, and a little overlay here exactly like the damage overlay, but we turn it blue, and there's just kind of a random noise pattern here. We're going to be using this to actually overlay completely fade out and then fade back in when we're loading or unloading the game. Now within the launch menu, we have a couple options here. We have the full screen toggle, and that's just going to be toggling whether we're in full screen or windowed mode. And then of course, play and quit. Now play is not actually going to like change the scene or anything it's just going to switch to the player camera and start time under the pause menu we have the resume and quit buttons and under the restart menu we have the restart button as well as the quit button now the restart button will actually restart the level and that's going to be pretty much it for the actual scene setup we're going to call this script menu handler we're placing it inside of the player folder and the menu handler is going to be mostly just a lot of different functions that each of the different buttons can call so say the quit button here we'll be calling the same function regardless of which menu you're actually selecting the quit button from and those are going to be connected up through signals but We'll get to that as soon as we're done with the menu handler itself. So let's dive into code and get started. All right, so getting started in code here, we went ahead and cleaned everything out as we don't need any of that. We're going to start with some exports. The first three are going to be the launch menu, the pause menu, and the death menu. These are all going to be of type control, and they're just going to be references to enable or disable the visibility of the various menus. Then we're going to need a reference to the player node, the level camera, and the transition material. Now the player node is going to be used to actually hide the player when we're currently on the starting level menu. And then the level camera will be handling the camera for the actual level preview scene. And it will also be positioning that to wherever the player is whenever they die, as we'll be deleting the player node when that occurs. Now in addition to this, we are going to need the transition material, and that's going to be for the overlay for the fade out and fade in. And that's going to be handled exactly like the damage material in the previous tutorial. And last but not least, we're just going to need a transition time for however long it takes to fade in or out when transitioning levels or exiting the game. Then in the non-export variables, we do need a Boolean for if we are currently playing. And all this is going to handle is if we are currently not playing, then that means we are dead or we're on the start menu, then we don't want to pop up the pause menu, for example, if someone hits escape. Now, beginning on the functions, we're going to go ahead and create a new function for sets transition value. And all this is going to do is take the transition material and set the shader parameter type of effect strength, just like we did in the damage overlay tutorial. And we're going to set it to whatever value it's passed. Now, we are going to be handling this transition using tweens. And tweens are a very complex subject, and I'll leave the documentation in the description. But the basic idea is that they transition anything from one state to another. So tweens in Godot can be like bouncing an object or fading an object away and in our case we're going to be calling this function every frame with a value that blends for between 0 and 3 or 3 and 0 in order to transition the effect of the overlay. So speaking of which we're going to create a new function called tween in trans and that's just going to be tweening in the transition overlay fade and we're also going to be passing it a parameter with the type of callable. Now you'll notice the little question mark here in C sharp this means that it is a nullable value so even though callable is a struct which is not normally nullable we can pass this as a null value and we're going to default it to null that way if you just call tween in transition it will just transition to the black screen but if you call it with a callable function in this parameter it can also handle that and call that function at the end of the transition now we do need to go ahead and create a new tween so let's go ahead and create that we're going to be using the function called get tree.create tween and this will create a new tween object which whenever you call this function will immediately start after this function exists. Then we're going to go ahead and set the pause mode to tween pause mode dot process. Now this is going to make sure that even if the game is paused, this tween will execute. And since the game will be pausing quite a lot whenever someone hits escape or dies or what have you, we do want to have this in place. 
Now, in addition to this, we can go ahead and use the tween method function, and this is going to be calling the set transition value as we cannot directly target the shader material with a tweening function. And so as a result, we just need to call this function and we're going to be passing it a value between zero and three. Now, the way tweening method works is that it calls the method every frame with a value that blends between the from value to the to value. So in our case, two is being three and from being zero, and it blends over the course of whatever the transition time is which we're probably going to set to like two seconds or something. And then last but not least, we can go ahead and check to see if the completable call, if the completion callable does not equal null, then we do need to go ahead and use the tween callback function on the tween, which is just going to, whenever it's done with this transition, go ahead and call that function, whichever function that we passed it. And that's pretty much it for the transition. This will handle any transition we want to do and optionally call a function afterwards. Now we do need to create a duplicate function that's going to look almost identical to this one. And instead of fading from zero to three, it's going to be fading from three to zero. And we're just going to call that tween out transition. That's just going to tween away from the transition effect. So it's going to be fading from black back to clear. Now, next up, we can go ahead and create a couple functions. We're going to be creating first off an exit function, which is just going to use the tween in transition. So it's going to fade to black. And once it is completed, it's going to be passing a callable that is just using the get tree dot quit function. Now callables need to be passed in a actual function to call and you do that using a lambda function. So it'll be two little parentheses and equals and an arrow and then whatever function you want to actually call. So whenever this transition is complete down here, it will go ahead and use the callback to execute the quit function. In addition to that, just above it, we can go ahead and create a function for restart level and it's going to be using the get tree dot reload current scene function, which is pretty self-explanatory. Now let's go ahead and handle the actual launching of the game. So we're going to create a function called begin launch, and it's going to be first off setting the mouse mode to captured so that that way it goes ahead and makes the mouse hide. And it's going to make the launch menu no longer visible. Then it's going to transition from its clear state into its black state using the tween and transition. And it's going to be passing it a callable using the finish launch function. As we don't want to snap the camera to where the player is when the player can still see the world. So we're going to fade to black and when we're done, we're going to call a new function called finish launch. And all finish launch is going to do is go ahead and make the player visible and it's going to make the level camera current value equal to false. Now, whenever you set a camera to false on current, it will go ahead and try and find another camera that the current value is not equal fault and it will use that one. So by setting this to false, we're just automatically switching us over to the player. Now, in addition to this, we're going to go ahead and use the tween out transition function. So that'll go ahead and fade out from black back to clear. And we're going to go ahead and set get tree dot pause to fault. So that'll go ahead and unpause the game. And we're going to set is playing to true. Now let's go ahead and handle the pause menu. Now the pause menu is going to be pretty simple. We're just going to be setting the player mouse to visible and setting the pause menu to visible as well as the game tree paused to true. Whenever we turn on the pause menu. And we're also going to have a function for hiding the pause menu, which is just going to do the opposite of all of these functions. So it's going to capture the mouse, hide the pause menu and unpause the game. Now, just above the pause menus, let's go ahead and create a function that's going to toggle the pause menu. So we're going to check to see if the pause menu dot visible equals to true. And if so, we're going to hide it. And if not, we're going to show it. And this is going to be called from the input function. The input function is an override of the Godot functions. And all it's going to do is take the input event of whatever event it is. And we're going to be checking to see if the event action is pressed escape. So you press the escape key and we are currently playing. Then go ahead and toggle the pause menu. Speaking of which, just above the toggle pause menu, let's create a new function for toggle full screen mode. Now toggle full screen mode is a little bit more complicated. We're going to have to use something called display server dot window get mode and display server is just kind of handling everything having to do with the actual window that the player is using. So whatever window the application is running in and we're going to check to see if get window mode does not equal full screen. If so, we're going to set it to full screen and otherwise we're going to set it to windowed and this is going to be called using that button on the main menu I showed you earlier. Now just above the pause menu, we can go ahead and create a new function for showing the death menu. Now the showing the death menu is going to be a little bit more involved than the pause menu. We're going to be passing it a camera location as well as a camera rotation. And it's going to be setting the camera for the level camera to that location and rotation and setting its current to equal true before it deletes the player node. And the reason for this is when the player node is deleted, all the AI kind of just do whatever they want to do and it makes a good transition. So we'll move the level camera to that location of the player's camera, delete 
the player and then go ahead and unpause the game. Now we are going to be transitioning out here and that implies that we've transitioned in. So let's go ahead and handle the on death function. Now the on death function is going to be taking a camera location and rotation. It's going to be pausing the game, setting is plays to false so that that way you can't pause the game using the escape key. And it's going to be transitioning into the fade out and passing the show death menu function as a callable. So whenever it's done transitioning to a black screen, it'll go ahead and show the death menu and transition back to a clear screen. Now the showing on death function is a little bit complicated. We're actually going to have to be handling that on the player health controller, but we'll get to that in just a moment. All right. And last but not least, we're going to go ahead and create a ready function, which is just going to be overriding the ready function. We're going to be using the get tree dot paused equal to true. So we're going to default to paused. Then we're going to go ahead and set the transition material to three, which is just going to max out the black screen. And we're going to set launch menu dot visible equal to true and then tween out that trans and then tween out that transition. So it's going to be fading from black back into clear as soon as you start the game. Now, in addition to this, we're going to go ahead and set the player node visible to false as well as the level camera dot current equal to true. So we go ahead and default to the level camera. Now, in addition to this, we need to go ahead and get the node player health controller underneath the player node. And if it does not equal null, we need to go ahead and connect the on player death function from there. Now, the player health controller, I did a couple modifications to to handle the on player death event. And you can see it right here. It just goes ahead and passes out the signal with player camera, global position and global rotation, and then goes ahead and handles the overlay there. And that event is just going to be calling the menu handler for the on death function, which is right there. And that's pretty much it for this script. Now we do need to go ahead and handle all of the signals. So let's go ahead and swap over back to Godot and handle those. Now in here, you can drag in the menus handler. We do need to go ahead and set up a couple containers here. So we're gonna set the launch menu, the pause menu, the death menu, and then the player node and level camera, we're gonna actually set up in level one scene. And the transition material, we need to quick load from the materials slash player slash menu overlay material material. And that should handle anything having to do with that. You can just go ahead and fade it out the right there to test it. You may need to manipulate the max radius in order to make it actually work properly but it looks pretty good to me. Now for the transition time, I'm gonna go ahead and set it to two and we can save it there. On the actual level, we can go ahead and select the menus object right here and we can select the player node from there as well as the level camera we can assign right there. We can go ahead and save this. Now on the menus object itself, we do need to handle all of the signals. I already set all of them up, but for each one, the function that they should be calling should be self-explanatory. For the full screen, you're calling the toggle full screen on pressed, begin launch for the play button, exit game for the quick button, and so on and so forth. Be sure when you're setting these buttons to set it to the pressed function, not any of the other functions, as you run into some weird behavior otherwise. And that should be pretty much it, nothing too complicated there. So let's go ahead and hide the launch menu. Let's save that and let's hit play and see how it looks. All right, you can see the window here. And if we go ahead and hit the full screen toggle, you can see it full screens now. And it goes ahead and toggles back and forth. And if we go ahead and select the play function, you can see it fades out. And now we fade back in as the player. And if we go ahead and shoot, we can kill the enemies just like normal. If we press escape, we are now paused. And you can see everything just pauses in place. And if we hit resume, we're back to normal. And if we take enough damage, we go ahead and die. And all of the AI just kind of do their own thing and wander around and act funny. And we can go ahead and press the restart button. And we fade back in. And that's pretty much it. We're good. And that's where we'll leave it today. Next week, we're going to be wrapping up this entire project with a little bit of work on the audio and then just kind of a post-mortem on the entire project to kind of just go over what worked, what didn't work, and what I think of the entire project. Before we move back to some beginner tutorials, we're going to be doing some work on some basic tutorials on some subjects that I've been asked a lot about and that I've just been putting off to finish this tutorial series. Thank you all for your patience and for your viewership and for, more importantly, your interactions. Talking to all of you has been a lot of help in keeping my head screwed on straight and just talking to, to y'all about projects, not just this project, but your own projects. I love to hear all from all of you about your projects and I hope you all complete them and get done with whatever you're trying to do. Thank you all for watching as always and I hope you all have a wonderful week. We'll see you all back here next week for the next tutorial.